Wow. Today, we're in for a real shit show. Lifetime is a cable channel that caters to middle-aged moms. And by caters to them, I mean panders to them. Lifetime has some original shows. Unreal, Preacher's Daughters, Dance Moms, Little Women, LA, The Client List, Devious Maids. People watch this shit, but if you want to see the good stuff, you gotta check out the Lifetime original movies. Lifetime airs many movies targeted to women. My mom was watching one of these once, and that's how I got introduced to the whole thing. I walked in and I was like, Mom, what is this crap? And she said, stop hating everything, you nitpicking, faggot-lipped, adopted piece of shit. But enough about that. <laughs> I asked everyone on Twitter what Lifetime movies I should talk about, and with the help of a few fans and a few friends, I was able to narrow it down to these eight movies. Now, to decide the order, I got an index card, cut it up, wrote names on them, put them in a bag, and just shook it up. We're not using any stupid fucking wheels. So, Cyber Seduction is about a kid who gets addicted to internet porn. Hey, I found this pretty extreme website last night. That's pretty extreme, dude. Another multiplayer game? No, man. Something a lot hotter. Jeremy Sumter is in it, and he was in the 2003 Peter Pan? Hold on, let me look this up. Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah. The 2003 Peter Pan. So we're just gonna pretend this is the prequel to Peter Pan. It's the temptations of internet porn, which led Peter to run away from home and go to Neverland. Like, he constantly dreams about fucking Tinkerbell. I mean, it's all left up to interpretation, you know. Based on the kind of person you are. So the movie starts with the kid trying to kill himself, and instead of, like, slitting his wrists, he jumps into a pool and just, like, drowns himself in a four-foot pool and then we flash back to three months earlier and he's swimming and he has a beautiful girlfriend and a mom and this hot girl likes him and he has a brother that loves him and everything's going great for him until he discovers the internet hey door you know what no get out of here oh, what's that let me see none of your business get out of here let me see no get out of here get out of here Fine, I'm telling mom! Oh my god. This movie's kind of old and kind of dated. You have a problem with pornography. No, Dr. Phil, I don't. Oh my god, that acting is wonderful. But let's get to the meat and potatoes. Peter Pan gets home and then he looks on his 10 year old computer and he, I guess he just types in boobs. It's shot like a horror film. Dude, where'd you go tonight? Check this out. At Big Breasted Women. That's what I look up. I just type into Google, Big Breasted Women. This is what happens when a 50 year old woman um, tries to write for a teenage boy. It's just to see what comes up. Those are such losers. How'd you like it if we watch Naked Guys? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hilarious. These people are freaks. That's my are you having fun? The people who made this movie clearly have no understanding of how the internet works or how teenage boys work. This kid is like 16 years old it looks like, and he's just discovering internet porn now. Like he's never jerked off in his life, he's never looked up porn in his life, he doesn't even know what it is. He's shocked by the sight of seeing a breast. It's not even exposed. A lust for bust. God, fucking help me. So he's looking at internet porn, kind of. It's not even porn, it's just like cleavage. With his door open and all his lights turned on, and his mom walks in on him and is like, what's going on here? Justin, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to bed now, okay, mom? Good night. Night. What a cringy scene. Who looks up internet porn with their door wide open? Can you at least lock the door? So the problem with this movie, besides everything else, is that it treats puberty as like this terrible thing, even though it's completely fine. Justin, you're addicted! You can't stop! I'm not addicted! Stop lying! Look, I'm not! Hey, stop it! Just stop lying! Just get the hell out of my face! <gasps> what do you want to do, Dad, huh? You want to hit me, Dad? You want to hit me, Dad? Stop! 
I don't know if you know this, kid. There's nothing wrong with jerking off. There's nothing wrong with being attracted to girls. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have sex with this girl. He likes porn. He's a normal kid. So his mother basically tries to stop him from jerking off. She bans the internet from him, basically, because she thinks he has an addiction. And that only makes him sneak out and want to find porn somewhere else, which only makes the problem worse. There's one hilarious scene where he steals his girlfriend's P- What the fuck is this thing? A PDA? Is that what old people use? And then he literally downloads porn on it. Hey, what you doing with my PDA? Um, just sending myself an email so I don't forget. Forget what? How beautiful you are. Wh what the fuck? No one does this. You can't have a porn addiction on the level of Michael Fassbender in shame if you literally haven't jerked off before. He just kind of looks at the porn and you're like, what? Are you gonna do anything? Or are you just gonna look at it? Then one day he's looking at the porn and his brother barges in. But what's even funnier is what happens after. Alex, what's going on? Um, he, he's all pumped up. He just defeated the drug dealer in Grand Theft Auto. Tits wouldn't traumatize this kid, especially the kind of softcore shit this dweeb is watching. To me, this movie isn't really about being addicted to porn. It's more about sexual frustration. His parents won't let him jerk off. His girlfriend won't fuck him. He barely even touches his girlfriend ever. So of course his porn addiction worsens because no one will let him jerk off. And he goes to like the school library and looks up porn there. And then he sees this girl on the website. And I don't know what this means. It's either he's imagining her on the website or she's actually on the website even though she's underage. So then they like go out and then they started having sex. It happened pretty fast, but whatever. And then he's like, no. Are you turning me down? No, no, it's just not that, it's just... You're kidding me. Get out. The hell out of here! Get out of here! You get out of here! Get out of here! This movie's retarded. And then this happens. Oh my god, that's a little extreme, don't you think? His girlfriend breaks up with him because he put porn on her PDA. His parents hate him now, and then he finally admits he has an addiction, and then he gets beat up by a bunch of bullies. That's another thing, too. He's made fun of in school for watching porn. Here you're a real freak, though. Into the real twisted stuff. Come on, you guys, I'm just fooling around. This whole porn thing's a joke. You're the joke, by the boy. What? Jimmy says he's the new king of porn. Kinky the Clown. Kinky the Clown. That's a good one. I gotta write that down. I didn't actually write it down. So anyway, his life is ruined. And then he that's when he decides to kill himself. And then I guess Lifetime figured that ending was a little too sad. So they cut to like a montage of him looking through his life. And then he starts swimming toward the camera. And then freeze frame on his face. And then it goes to blue. What a terrible ending. Anyway, next movie. Oh god, look at that opening title. Liz and Dick, unfortunately, there isn't much to talk about. Don't get me wrong, it's bad. It's really bad. I killed my brother. Can you help that? Well, can you? But it's not on the level of cyber seduction. Liz and Dick is just a boring drama that's poorly acted, poorly written, and just not thought out at all. Lindsay Lohan is unbelievably awful in it. Oh, Mark Antony. How prompt of you. And so is everybody else. This movie's apparently based on a true story. Apparently. You're gonna start to see at the beginning of every Lifetime movie, it says based on a true story even though it, it never really is. This movie also does this, like, kind of framing device, I guess you could call it, where Lindsay Lohan and the other guy, Dick, sit down in chairs and just talk to the camera about how great their romance was. It's not even necessary. Like, you don't learn any information from it. It's just there to help with the pacing. Like in this scene, for example. They wanted to use another take, so they just cut to them for a second, and then they cut back. And, and you're like, oh, I guess they needed to cut the shot. It's worth watching just for the really bad acting, but overall there isn't a lot of memorable scenes. It's two bad actors acting bad. No! No! No, 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 no,
my love. I'm really tired of movies where the fucking lead can't cry. They just make a really, really sad face that you make when you're crying without any tears. So it just looks like they're constipated. Looks fucking terrible. You're gonna see this a lot in Lifetime movies. So get used to it. Like, how can you be so fucking bad at your job? Your job is to act. Act. When a janitor cleans a fucking toilet and he doesn't do a good job, you're not like, oh well, cleaning toilets is hard. That's your only job is to act and cry, and you can't do it. Fuck, Lindsay, come on. Anyway, what's our next movie? Oh, great. Just fucking kill me. Just fucking kill me right now. Just shoot a bullet out of the fucking TV and hit me in the skull. And just fucking kill me. Why does this exist? I'm gonna talk more about the Full House one than the Saved by the Bell one because I'm not that familiar with Saved by the Bell, but I grew up watching Full House. It's not a good show, but as a kid I liked it. As a kid you like a lot of bad things. I'm gonna talk about the Saved by the Bell one first, just to get it out of the way. The unauthorized Saved by the Bell story chronicles a bunch of Saved by the Bell cast impersonators recreating the events of their life. The story is told through the eyes of Screech, since Screech was a producer on it. Where is a Screech sex tape? You, you gotta be worth at least a million. There isn't much to make fun of here for me, because I'm not familiar with Saved by the Bell. If you watch Saved by the Bell, watch this. I'm sure you'll get a kick out of it. I just took great pleasure in all the really bad acting and the, the freeze frame moments. There are these moments where it goes in a freeze frame and everyone does such a bad job at pretending to be frozen. Can you stop moving? Everyone is moving. Look at that. Maybe you can do some VFX work to actually make everyone frozen or is that too hard? You don't know how to do that. Yeah, making movies is hard. I don't blame you. Why would you try? Just tell everyone to stand still. I'm sure all 100 extras will stand perfectly still. So now let's talk about the full house version. Let's just take a second to admire the casting. It's pretty fucking hilarious. There's Uncle Joey. That's supposed to be Bob Saget. Oh, Bob Saget! DJ looks nothing like DJ. The Olsen twins look nothing like the Olsen twins. And they start actually older than they did in the show. Like, there's this scene where they have to put diapers on Michelle. Meanwhile, Michelle's like fucking five years old. She was a baby in the first season of the show. Could you not hire babies? Is that too hard? So they build the full house set, and it looks nothing like the set from the actual show. They didn't even try. The kitchen is on the right side, and the living room is on the left. That's how it worked in the show. But in this version, the kitchen's on the left, and the living room's on the right. Couldn't even do that right? The most interesting part of the movie is when they were casting everybody and like developing the show. I don't know if it's true or not, but it says it's based on a true story, so, you know. But yeah, as a hardcore fan of Full House, I never knew any of this stuff. So it was kind of interesting on that level. It's not well written or well acted at all. Hey, why don't we just be spontaneous? Why don't we push the envelope? Let's take it. I want to be your video coffee. It's the morning show after all. That's what we're here for, right? But it was like somewhat interesting at that point. And then they have those scenes, you know, those scenes where they have to show one of the cast members being very, you know, eccentric and likable and funny. But the writers don't have the talent to write a character that's eccentric or likable or funny. So they have them like act out a bunch of nonsense as music plays and everyone's just laughing. <laughs> anyway, once the movie actually gets started, it kind of sucks. It's just going through the motions at that point. There's no conflict really, and whatever conflict there is is very forced and ham-handed. Finally get to stop playing a single dad with three daughters. Now I've become one. The weirdest scene in the movie is like this funeral scene. I don't I don't know if I missed anything, but I don't know who this funeral is for. I they literally just cut from like a scene to a funeral. Did I miss something? Someone let me know in the comments section like where this funeral came from. It's just this random funeral in the movie and then the next scene everyone forgets about it. It's so weird. Anyway, the movie really ends on a high note. Actually, I have something I'd like to say as well. Something as heartwarming and poetic as Bob's little toast here. Oh, oh, you. You really? <laughs> oh, come on! 
I thought that was beautiful! I think it's worth watching just for the novelty of it, but it's not great. It's kind of sad because I think we've already seen the best movie, and all of these movies compared to Cyber Seduction, they're not even close. <laughs> You're not pregnant. Oh. There's this whole group of 16-year-old girls who form a pregnancy pact, and the whole movie's just about them desperately trying to get pregnant, and it's fucking hilarious. I looked up the real story to see if anything was accurate, and while most of it isn't accurate, the real story is almost as funny. It was apparently a group of 18 students who became pregnant. One girl was so desperate she tried to have sex with a 24-year-old homeless man with the hopes that he would impregnate her. You can't make that stuff up. I heard you said you were trying to get pregnant, and that you caught baby fever from Rose or something like that. Who told you that? I never said that. Okay, look, whatever. So am I the father or what? What do you care? I don't. Fine, then go. Get away from me. Fine, freak. You know, I'm at a loss for words right now. I'm so sorry. This could have been something really interesting. Except this is once again written by a committee of a bunch of 50-year-old women who have no idea what teenagers are like. Time magazine is saying that girls in your school made a pact to become pregnant. Is that true? Were you guys in a pact? Pact? What do you mean pact? I, I don't even know what that word means. No! And <laughs> this girl's smoking while she's pregnant. You are the girls in the pack. Did you make a pack with your friends to get pregnant? Excuse me. Hey, you guys, leave them alone. These girls are minor. Can we just get a video of her stomach? Oh, nice. Can we just get a video of her stomach? You're all gonna get pregnant too. So we can all have our babies together. I swear. We all swear. This is really gonna happen. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> she's constantly checking if she's pregnant or not. What the fuck is this? And then girls in school start bullying this girl because she's not pregnant yet. This is so fucking bizarre. It's like watching a David Lynch film. Everyone is pregnant. Look at all the pregnant people. So then the lead girl is afraid of losing her boyfriend. Like her boyfriend isn't gonna like her anymore. So she decides to get pregnant so that Jesse has to be with her. This is like some Amy Dunn shit. Do you know that boy? That's him, Troy. No, don't. I don't want him to know. You don't want him to know that you're pregnant? Just leave me alone, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> this shot is great. So, she's pregnant, and her boyfriend left her, and he's with somebody else who isn't pregnant. Great job. Lifetime's really breaking conventions with this ending, but the moral of the story is, don't get pregnant when you're 16 years old. Fuck, man. What a... What a trip. Our next movie is Craigslist Killer, and this is by far the worst one. The problem with this movie is that it's just boring. Yes, there's bad acting. Yes, there's bad music. It's shot poorly. But after this monstrosity, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you can get worse than that. There is one great scene in this movie, though. Basically, at the end of the movie, the Craigslist Killer is caught, and he has a wife. So he, he decides to kill himself in prison. So what he does is he slits his wrists and then writes a message to his wife on the wall in blood. And then he puts a plastic bag over his head and suffocates himself. <laughs> like, don't you think that's a little overboard? You didn't have to do both. Blue Lagoon The Awakening is awesome. Blue Lagoon The Awakening is about two beautiful people getting stuck on an island. The movie starts with, of course, them waking up to an alarm clock. You know, the most cliche way to start a movie. The thing they tell you not to do in Screenwriting 101. She's the popular neat one. And he's the unpopular dirty one. You gotta write characters as opposites, cause that's the only way there will be conflict. Make one messy and make one neat. Fucking film student wrote this. Hey Emma. Hey, Emma. And that's the caliber of acting we're dealing with. You can hand me that now. If you can follow me to the principal's office. Well then, lead the way. Oh. 
We're all done! So then they go on a school field trip to fucking... I don't... What? Where is this? You get to go on this amazing resort, and there's a pool, and you get to walk around in bathing suits. The furthest I've ever been on a school trip is going to Washington, D.C., and it was cold. And the whole day, we just did stuff in a museum, and we had to stay in groups. And then at the end of the day, we got locked in our rooms. They taped the doors shut, and there was a security guard outside to make sure that none of us went to each other's rooms. There was an 11 o'clock curfew, and we had to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's how school trips usually go. So this is like science fiction to me. And then at the end of the day, they get to sneak out, and they get to go on a party on a yacht. And then this dumb bitch gets knocked over, and then the guy from earlier with the knife goes after her, and then they go on a raft, and then the boat goes away from them, and then it just so happens that a lightning storm comes. This reminds me of Life of Pi, because the effects are about as good as Life of Pi. It looks really good. Are you kidding? Fine, I'll paddle. Okay, okay. I'll paddle. So then they happen to stumble on an island, and instead of looking for food or water, they just decide to fuck around. Hey, look. Whoa, 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 stop. What? The berries. White and yellow, kill a fellow, purple and blue, good for you. You're a little bit weird, you know that, right? He's not a freak for knowing that. You have to be a fucking idiot to eat berries on some random plant. So yeah, they just walk around for a while, and the guy's like, Oh my god, it's a waterfall, I can't believe it. You know how many people have been swimming in this waterfall? Think of the essay you could write. I'm so good at acting, oh my god, I can't believe it. Do you know how unique this is? It's clearly not CGI, they're on a cliff, and they just film it against the sky. Oh my god, I can't believe it, we're on a cliff, oh my god, I can't believe it. Wow. Remember when he said waterfalls were rare? Two minutes later, they find two more waterfalls. So now it's been about a week in the movie's time, and they're not panicking at all. Even though they found no food or water, really, they're not sad that they'll never see their families again. Why don't you write a giant SOS? Find the largest, whitest space on the beach and spell out SOS with dark colored debris as large as you can. No. So then he's like, you know what? I feel like going for a swim. I don't know. I go for a swim. Don't waste your energy. Well, fuck that. Just swim around. Waste all the energy. Don't worry. If you're pretty, you'll find food. Celebration swim? Ma, how did they not find these kids? The yacht didn't go that far out. They have to be in the vicinity of that yacht. Like, you think they would have found them by now. Oh my god, it's been 25 minutes. And then the Black Panther starts chasing after them. Yeah, the Black Panther. This guy. And he outruns a Black Panther and then kills it. Killed a Black Panther, oh my god, I can't believe it. Wow. And then they figure this is a good time to have a romantic scene at a waterfall. And then they get rescued. And then for some reason, the movie goes on for another 15 minutes. They're not friends anymore, even though they've been fucking for two months. It's very bizarre. But then they go to prom, and neither of them bring dates. So he just decides to wait outside in the rain for her. And then they dance in the rain. And then that's the end of the movie. This is one of the best movies out of the bunch. It's not as good as Cyber Seduction, but it's better than Pregnancy Pact. <laughs> Gotta say, we have a pretty good lineup. Let's see if we end strong. Oh god, my eyes. Now stop with all the fucking... Ugh. Let's make the internet look cool. We're gonna be stylized. We're gonna do like a montage of... Oh, it's not Instagram, it's iGram. Look at all the pictures. We're so hip and cool with the kids. Kids are always on their cell phones. They're always on Facebook. They're always on Twitter. They're always posting stuff to iGram. Keeping it turned up, Walker. Oh my that god, that transition. It. It's like an amateur made this. I just gotta work on that breakdown more and get it tight. Take a compliment, okay? BT Dubs, we need to come up with some more steps. You wanna take a shot at it? Down. Alexis is great with choreography, too. Bella Thorne is terrible at acting. Selfie time! Smile! Look, I really want to go to this party. Are you gonna come with me or not? Not tonight. What is wrong with you? Oh, fine! Ugh. Here comes the inciting incident. Yeah, so her leg starts hurting her now. 
and of course he gets put all over iGram. Whoa, look at this montage, it's so cool, we're so hip and cool with the kids, everyone's on iGram. We're gonna do a montage of all the iGram. She made it in the top Vine compilations of March 2012, Vine spelt V-Y-N. The compilation was uploaded to YouTube, spelt U-T-O-O-B. They, they gotta stop with this now. It's been, it's like non-stop iGram bullshit. Oh my God, stop! Hashtag get over yourself. That's how young people talk. They talk about hashtags. Hashtag, hashtag. And then she meets this girl and this girl's like, Hey, Bella Thorne, you wanna try drugs? Look at young people, always on their phones. Now hang on tight, guys, a party's about to start, and it's gonna get crazy. Oh, 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 this is my jammity jam! This is my jammity jam! Party. <sighs> okay. Oh. Sorry guys, it's just when I take prescription medication, I just go fucking nuts. Oh my god, so artsy. You get an A plus on your student film project. So creative. Good job. Really redefining the genre. So then she starts taking a lot of medication, a lot of medication to the point where you can really tell she's fucked up. I'm fine. I... Let's go again. Oh, I'm sorry. And yet no one seems to notice. She's like vomiting in class. And then she tries meth and it doesn't work out. <laughs> Oh, the video of her falling went all over iGram. It's going viral. And then she tries heroin. Can no one tell there's something wrong with her? She's like sweating and fucking all greasy. Somebody went through my stuff. All my cash is gone. So is mine. Did they get you? Nope. Well, do you know who would do this? Are you accusing me? What? I don't know what she's talking about. I didn't see anybody. Why you accusing me, huh? Sometimes my muscles, they... <laughs> what? Some great green screen, too. It's so incompetent. Riley, um... died of an overdose. It was heroin. What? No, that, that, that's not possible. She, she was my best friend, I would know. What? So then they turn her into a hooker, and then she says, maybe I should stop doing all these drugs. She goes to rehab, and her recovery is posted on iGram, and then they cut to this, and that's the end of the movie. They also include a link in case you have an addiction problem. Keep in mind, this is the same link they told you to go to in Cyber Seduction. So, if you have a drug addiction or a porn addiction, go to this website. Anyway, I'm done. I mean, what else do you want me to say? The room's a fucking mess. I'm all sweaty. Thank you for watching and all that good stuff. I'll leave you alone.